man once said, the will to win, the desire to succeed. What takes guts is to put yourself on the line. The urge to reach your full potential. A leader makes the way. These are the keys that will unlock the door to personal excellence. Success Resources is the world's leading events promoter of business, personal development, and wealth creation programs. For over 30 years, we've helped over 10 million people across 30 countries unlock their full potential. From North America, to Europe, to Africa, to Asia, to Oceania, we are the key to your personal success. We open the door to the world's best speakers, such as Anthony Robbins, Sir Richard Branson, Robert Kiyosaki and T. Harv Eker, to name a few. Praised by Donald Trump for being the world's best, we have over 500 events a year and access to the greatest thinkers, achievers and motivators of our time. We guide you to the success that lies in every one of us. But you will not discover your greatness in your comfort zone. You have to have confidence in yourself. We have never really truly reached our destination. There's always another level to strive for. Your best is yet to come. Success Resources, your learning partners.
Hello, 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 hello everyone. Once again, today, welcome to another Bitcoin journey to 100,000. As you can see, I'm not in my normal uh, place, uh, in the office, etc. I'm outside, but yet we are committed to share with you our, our uh, data and our research on Bitcoin journey to 100,000. Now, yesterday was a big day, really, really big, fantastic day when the CPI data came out. So let's discuss about what's going on with CPI, what's going on with inflation, why is it so crucial, this data from yesterday, and how is it going to affect Bitcoin and crypto market and even investment as a whole. My name is Richard Tan from Success Resources. We are the world leading education provider every week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Like today is Friday, uh, we are still delivering, right? Okay. This is streamed live on Facebook and YouTube. And if this is something that you, um, you are interested in to follow this incredible journey of Bitcoin to 100,000, make sure you subscribe to the channel, smash the thumbs up button and also the notification so that whenever we have a video, you are the first to know. Now, I'm very delighted to bring uh, my friend, Dr. Clement Chan, to the program. He's no stranger to many of you, especially the many thousands of students out there because he is an expert and teacher in the art of wealth creation. Welcome, Dr. Clement. Wow, Richard, you're super <laughs> committed because I see you dressed as a man in black. <laughs> Formal wear. <laughs> <laughs> and putting yeah, on your mask, I feel so happy at home right now. <laughs> <laughs> my, my masking, I'm, I'm, not used to, I'm not used to speaking on masks, so the mask is dropping, so please, please uh, forgive me. Okay, but that's I don't know the part I, I want everybody to know, that's how committed Richard is, regardless of time and space, <laughs> he will be yeah. there for us. Bitcoin all the way to 100,000. Yes, I'm excited. Uh, thank God it's Friday. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Dr. Clement. Now, Dr. Clement, uh, well, everybody, inflation has surged 7.5% based on the, 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 the most recent report yesterday on an annual basis, even more than expected and the highest since 1982. Now, there could be Jerome Power, you know, there could be a rate hike coming and possibly more coming. How is it going to affect Bitcoin market and investing as a whole? Now, this will be a question we'll reserve for Dr. Clement at the end there. So stay put for this very, very important highlight and uh, wisdom from Dr. Clement. So, but let's start off. Let's start off with news that Russia likely to recognize Bitcoin as a form of currency. Now, we all know, you know, Russia at one time wanted to ban Bitcoin. So obviously, this is much better than an all-out ban on Bitcoin or crypto. Now, when Russia says it's going to trip uh, Bitcoin and crypto as like a currency, Dr. Clement, what does this really, really mean? Wow, this is, uh, in fact, this is the question that's top of my mind since the beginning of this year. And maybe first of all, I dive into the article. Every one of us can kind of uh, dissect this article and make our own conclusions, all right? So step one, Russia likely to recognize crypto as a form of currency. But out of this article, really many people got blindsided. The most important data on this article is right here, the date. February the 18th, and you know, the context behind this article kind of really, really mind-blowing because in the past, before this article came out, Russia was all out against Bitcoin, all out against cryptocurrency. Why there was a switch in mind that is so urgent, they have to approve it by the 18th of February, all right? So this is the context from Richard's question, I asked a further question. <laughs> and then I'm going to pull out this online calendar and kind of mark out 18th of February. Where exactly are we from there? Ladies and gentlemen, we are exactly one week away from 18th of February, which is the next Friday. So I'm going to point an arrow right here, right? And for those of you who follow us closely on the YouTube videos, you will know that one of the videos we talk about the fact that when would Russia actually invade 
Ukraine. And if, a, in, if an invasion were to take place, which were the likely days? We kind of pan out this question and we go really study on the geology and the weather patterns and we arrive at these two important days. Here we go. We say that if an invasion were to take place, it must take place before the 20th of February. Why? Because from the 20th of February onwards, the snow will start to melt. The word for it is called thaw. And if it starts to melt, the tanks cannot enter into a muddy zone. That's the reason why, as we are speaking right now, Russia and Belarus, they are conducting the largest scale military exercise ever been done before between the two countries. And if we kind of uh, put on a satellite lens and look down top-down approach, Russia and Belarus is just along the borderline of Ukraine. And what will potentially emerge is this. Here we go. I'm going to draw this line right across here so that you understand the implication. Step one. The moment they invade, they know the consequences. They will face the wrath of the United States of America. The full trade sanctions will be imposed and whacked upon Russia. And that's the reason why, point number one, I believe that they have to rush through this legislation on the 18th of February, get it approved so that they can, through the digital currency, bypass the trade sanctions. Step number two, then why is it so urgent for President Putin to meet up with President Xi Jinping of China? And these two guys are kind of a flash together in a single photograph and that is kind of an explicit, complicit, implicit <laughs> projection or narrative that they want to tell the world, hey, we are communist brothers. Anything we look out for each other, we get each other's blessing. And I believe behind the scene, I suspect there could be a negotiation whereby Russia can make full use of China's digital yuan and China's digital yuan will support Russia's digital currency. I believe there's some kind of commercial discussion go on behind the scene in order to bypass their common adversary, and that's the United States of America. That brings us to step three. Wow! And the step three is this. How would this benefit the entire marketplace? So I'm going to change my color right there. Here we go. If we look at this window, starting from this weekend all the way to 20th of February, I want all of you to take a vote and decide if there were to be an invasion into Ukraine, which date do you think it should take place? I repeat again, if there were an invasion by the Russians into Ukraine, which date inside the blue box do you think will take place? So I give everybody some time to think and we mark out the two red boxes there. Those are the crucial days. And kind of, I feel it as I'm speaking to you. And this is the part where both, all of us are learning from each other. I'm going to mark out my prediction. And my prediction is, it probably take place on the dawn on 19th of February. Just a guess, for fun. Don't take us too seriously. <laughs> we don't represent the Russians. We don't represent the Americans. We are just here as a political pundit, making our bets. If it were to take place, I believe it will be on the 19th on the Saturday. Why? Because between now to next Friday, they need to coordinate their military forces between the Russians and the Belarus. The coordination of going in together as a combined military force. That takes time. And those of you who serve the army, if you are from Singapore like me, in a conscript army, we are trained to exercise and practice and practice until they are ready for the D-Day. Step one. Step two, the law must pass through first on the 18th of February so that digital currency is accepted as a legal currency in the country ahead of the sanctions. I think this is what they're thinking about and thereby lead me to step three. There's only really one window left between 18 and 20th and I look in, I spot my, my zone and that's 19th of February. Now, I could be proven wrong, 
proven right doesn't matter. What matters is you take an insight from a very important question that Richard has asked me and you formulate your thesis. This is how we hope our community here among the Bitcoin hodlers don't just think about Bitcoin. Think about the impact that we have in on planet Earth. What is our contribution? How do we connect the dots? And thereby, you're going to enjoy the ride all the way to the moon. Back to you, Richard. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Clement. Thank, Dr. Clement, uh, your analysis is very, very interesting. Uh, but I do hope there is no war, no life loss. Everybody benefit. Now, the second, the second uh, uh, question for you is about this, the largest, largest fund manager in the world, BlackRock. Now, I only heard of BlackRock maybe one, two years ago. I didn't know how big they are. All I know is that because I come from a very small country, Singapore, the biggest uh, fund manager is our sovereign fund to Marseille. That's why I know, you know. But BlackRock is $10 trillion. It is like 50 to 100 times bigger than the sovereign fund in Singapore. It's the world's largest asset manager. And the recent news is that the world's largest asset manager, the $10 trillion BlackRock, is preparing to offer cryptocurrency trading, Bitcoin trading to its investor. Now, question to you is this. Is there something that they know we don't know? You know, like, they are so big and they go into this. Is there something they know that we don't know? Yes, absolutely, Richard, you know, BlackRock is really the magical and the guy is called Larry Finn, who is the CEO. In fact, very recently, I published an article in Singapore's Dollars and Cents and I spoke about, hey, Tamase being our country's sovereign wealth fund, there are five stocks which Tamase has invested in, which I believe all of us should grab hold of a pie of it. And one of them I highlighted was, in fact, BlackRock right here. And let me put forward the case, the thesis behind BlackRock. First of all, it is the only asset manager on planet Earth to surpass $10 trillion asset under management. That's what we call AUM. Now, that is like my blog boggling. $10 trillion. Oh my God, it's like bigger than any, most of the countries out there listed under United Nations. So, if you have a guy who's hitting BlackRock called Larry Fink, overseeing $10 trillion. What should be on the top of your head right now? On the top of your head is what are you going to sell to your customers? And your customers are the sovereign wealth funds of the world, the Saudi Arabia, the Singapore, the Malaysia, the South Korean. You've got to sell them something that no one else has to offer. And that is the reason why this article becomes important. It says here, sharp and creeps to all of us, BlackRock planning to offer crypto trading. And because their customers are so big and wide and so well-equipped, they have to give them something extraordinary. And the answer, ladies and gentlemen, is called crypto trading. And that's the reason why Richard and myself, we are so passionate about this subject because our passion is for the ordinary people. BlackRock passion is for the rich people. <laughs> now, who's going to come in to fill in this gap? And that's the reason why we are committed three times a week. You don't hear the CEO of BlackRock talking to you three times a week. You don't hear the CEO of the Marseille talking to you three times a week. In fact, I got to say this. Singapore came out with a warning to all crypto players, do not run advertisement teaching the public about cryptocurrency. I, I was like tearing my hair apart. I heard, hello, why do you want to do that? You tell our, our ordinary man not to learn about cryptocurrency, but you managing our wealth, put money into BlackRock and BlackRock put money into cryptocurrency. That cannot connect. That is why we are doing this. We do not want you to be left behind behind the 1.4 billion Chinese people from China, every single one of them are already trained to move currencies between their digital wallet. And you are not getting educated. 
You'll be so far behind, you can no way compete with the Chinese ever again in the future. That is the reason why if I go down here, they give me a very powerful word. I mean, oh my God, Richard, this is like the super powerful word. Are we ready? <laughs> this is like a mama word. Ready? Three, two, one. And this one is called Aladdin. My gosh. Aladdin stands for Asset Liability Debt and Derivative Investment Network. And let me tell you, they are not the first guy who talk about Aladdin. I've got to give the credit where it is. Richard is the first guy. <laughs> <laughs> Richard is so far ahead of our time. He re-envisioned the concept of Alibaba and the Aladdin. So they are talking about Aladdin right now. And they are saying, hey, we got to have an Aladdin blockchain strategy lead. Oh my gosh. Why? They got to sell something. $10 trillion, they got to sell something. And that's the reason why. Let's come back to planet Earth. That's the reason why you and I and all your friends and colleagues and your relatives, please mobilize them. Ask them to come watch our YouTube. We got to educate ourselves, stand up for ourselves. If someone else tells us not to look at it, all the more we got to look at it or else we'll be left behind the curve. Is this a game for the elitists? My answer is say no, and oh no. This is a game for common people. That's the reason why we love decentralization. That's the reason why common people have a chance to create extraordinary generational wealth. Back to you, Richard. Thank you, Dr. Clement. Thank you, Dr. Clement, for the wisdom and analysis of uh, black rock going into crypto trading. Now, before we go to the next uh, part of the program, uh, today is Friday. Friday is question and answer day. So if you have any question for Dr. Clement, please type in the Q&A of the chat box. Okay, Q, oh, no, sorry, what did I say? Please type in the chat box. Please type in the chat box so that uh, you know, at the end of all the questions, we will attend to your question, okay? So another thing is this. Another thing is this. That Dr. Clement, Success Resources, Richard Tan, you know, and, 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 and Spiking, we will never ask you to send us any cryptocurrency. Now, even if you receive a, a, in our Facebook or in uh, Clement's Facebook or Spiking's Facebook or Success Resources Facebook or Richard Tan's Facebook, that anybody asking you to send them cryptocurrency. Definitely, it is a scam. So, please look after your money. So, this is a warning for everybody. Do not send your cryptocurrency to, even if it's advertised, putting Clement's name, Spikey name, Success Resources name, or anybody. So, this is, a, this is a reminder for every one of you. So, question and answer. Uh, if you have any question for Dr. Clement, please type in the chat room. Now, Dr. Clement, Let's go to another giant uh, financial institution called JP Morgan. Now, a recent article, just one, two days ago, JP Morgan uh, readjusts their intelligent report that the long-term target for Bitcoin is 150,000. In fact, they, it, it moved from four, 146 to 150,000. Now, JP Morgan has been quite vocal on Bitcoin they are, they, are, they are giant bank, Bitcoin. And even its CEO, its CEO, Jamie, frequently make comment on Bitcoin, but mostly negative. What do you think of the latest statement that Bitcoin, uh, from JT Morgan, that Bitcoin long term to be 150,000 really, really meant? Well, this is absolutely... Uh... Really, really powerful statement to be made by JP Morgan. In fact, JP Morgan is in, on our hit list on our hedge fund. <laughs> they are doing one of the biggest stock buyback among the top 10 leading companies, well capitalized on Wall Street. And here we go. Let me read out to all of us the headline Bitcoin, JP Morgan readjusts re long term target to 150,000, but fair value is set at a particular price. So I'm going to scroll down right here and let us really di di dissect whatever they are talking about. There are two numbers that we need to know about. Number one, the number of 38,000 
right over here. And number two, the number of 44,000. So the moment they put out this, this range, I call it the channel range, or you can even draw it as a red box, right? Today, we are trading about $43,000, $44,000 per Bitcoin. And we know that step one, Michael Saylor break-even price is $30,000 per coin. Step number one. Step number two, Dr. Clement Chang magical number is double three, triple three. <laughs> $33,333, all right? Number two. And step number three, we have a baseline by JP Morgan at 38,000. So there are three groups of students right here, right now, the audience that are watching us. The first group of you, those who, of you who own Bitcoin below 38,000, congratulations. You are in safe land forevermore. Second group of you who bought above 38,000, congratulations. You can wait for JP Morgan pred prediction to come true because once it goes above the previous all-time high, which was tech at $69,000, everybody made money. So this is the moment we are waiting for in the year 2022 for Bitcoin to create an all-time historical high. Step number three, once it breaks the historical high, all these institutions that we are talking about, and we are talking about who? We just have to mention one guy, BlackRock, $10 trillion. They got to buy something. What do they need to buy? Bitcoin. And that will push the price above 100000 so you look at this is a very important box that tells you where is your positioning right now. Very important for your psychology because I've seen in recent times, many people crack under pressure. And I want to take this article as a reminder to all of us. So what if you sell your Bitcoin? You are just putting money back into your bank and Richard has really reminded us, my gosh, Yesterday, CPI index came out at 7.5%. Mama! How much you're earning from your bank's interest? 0.05%. You are negative 7.45% per year. You mean you rush to sell off your Bitcoin to go into your bank account with cash so that you suffer more losses at 7.45% per year. How ridiculous that is. That's the reason why while well, Richard gave out a, a warning message to all of us to remind that do not get scammed. I mean, I got so many people impersonating my Facebook account. It's so ridiculous. They'll take my picture, they'll send out messages, they kind of hack into Facebook and all that kind of stuff. But you know what? My account comes with a verified blue tick and I'm not worried about that. Likewise, I want to address this topic. So many students have come through under my training. And you can ask any one of my students, I always preach one message, do not sell at a loss. So if you come across any of my students telling you that, hey, they lost money in Bitcoin, that guy probably gone to the dark side because there's no reason for you to sell Bitcoin at a loss. Why? You sell Bitcoin at a loss, so that you can take your cash, put it in the bank, and suffer more losses. 7.45% every year, that's how much you're losing. <laughs> it doesn't make sense anymore. So I want you guys to know, if you are looking at BlackRock Black Rock today, and JP Morgan today, the biggest of the big out there managing money for institutional clients, and they're telling everybody, hey, the price should be about 100 to 150,000. And you go and sell, that is your own consequences. We told you not to do so. So oftentimes, you know, I'll take every opportunity to remind all of us, you are in this game to create generational wealth. You are not into this game because you're queuing to buy 4D tickets at the Singapore Toto outlets. I mean, I... I <laughs> Richard, you know, the past few days, I look at all the total dollars, like madness right now. Everybody queuing, like I, they, they told me about $18 million, a jackpot waiting for everybody to win. And it's as if everybody queuing up will have a chance to win. There's going to be like a few winners, but everyone is flooding the queue to buy the lottery ticket. I don't get it. I don't get it. They could better serve their money by buying into Bitcoin 
than a stupid lottery ticket, which eventually they'll tear up and say, oh, that's another day. Back to you, Richard. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Clement. Thank you, Dr. Clement. Dr. Clement, now we come to a very, very important uh, uh, question, uh, issue, that is inflation. Now, I don't know about other parts of the world, but in Singapore, uh, number one, uh, where, where, the, where it affects everybody is that taxi, Comfort Taxi is going to raise the taxi fare by around 8%. And I, think, I think one, two weeks' time, they're going to raise. And uh, Singapore Power has raised the energy electric tariff four times already last year. Uh, each about 5%, so raised by 20%. It means that, you know, all the Singaporean, actually, you know, all our money, all, all our earning, earning money has devalued, the value has devalued. But the recent, recent report by in the US, the inflation has reached 7.5% on annual basis. It's even more than expected and the highest since 1982. That could be Jerome Power could raise the raise the high uh, this uh, rate again coming and possibly several more times. Now, question to you, Doctor Clement, is how do you see this affecting Bitcoin and investing? Now, in views of this, what does normal investor need to do? Great, great question, Richard. And we're going to attack this question, the grassroots approach. Let's take a look at this article first. This is Singapore's, the, probably the largest taxi network company called Comfort Delgro. They're going to raise cap fares by around 8% in March. <coughs> now, March is exactly next month because they spell it here. This is a time frame given to them on the 1st of March itself. Now, 8% is not small. It's huge. And we have not recovered from the pandemic crisis yet. And in fact, many of the past jobs were already displaced. That means to say, new employees of the market have to find new jobs, new training, and more and more training to retrain themselves so that they are eligible for new jobs. So this is a real pain point, 8%. Number two, the tariff, basic utility services have been raising for fourth straight quarter of increase to a mind-boggling 5.6%. So you remember 5.6% and you remember 8%. Now, this is grassroots explaining to you the situation here in my country, Singapore. And then we go right here to this important announcement last night. I was watching it live. Inflation surges to 7.5%. Let me give you the historical track. November, it was 6.8%. And everybody believed that come winter, in December, it will drop. Nope, it went up to 7%. And everybody believes that when we arrive in January, it will drop. Nope, it went up again, 7.5%. And this is like mind-boggling. Things are so expensive right now. And it has broke the all-time record since 1982. Unprecedented. So Richard's question is so, so powerful because you really got to be looking at this problem right now. If you do not know what the hell is going on, you'll be a deer in the headlight, a frog in a pot of boiling water. And that's the reason why, let me show you the stats right here, because from the high inflation, the analysts like Goldman Sachs are already predicting that, oh my God, we're going to increase the interest rates seven times in 2022. You know what's the meaning of seven times? It's like every month announcing to you Oh, this month, we're going to increase by 50 basis points. Next month, increase by 75 basis points. Oh, next month, increase by 100 basis points. 50 basis points means 0.5%. 100 basis points means 1%. That is like mind-boggling. What's the consequences of raising interest rates seven times? Number one, the cost of doing business is going to be so expensive. Business survive based on borrowing money from the bank to keep their business alive. Now, if the interest rates goes up, they have to pass on the cost to who? To you, you and I, all of us, the consumers. And while we're trying to 
handle this rise of the height of the interest rates, we still have to handle what? Oh my gosh, we have to handle the taxi drivers, <laughs> the, 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 the taxi cab fares, we have to handle the electrical bill, and everything will come at the same time. Now, let me hold back my horses right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a doom and gloom because we go to straight away to the US government website right here. We call it the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. And we really want to have a few. Is it generally across all items 7.5%? So we click on the button right here below called show table. Click on it. Tong! And then I try to magnify it as big as possible. And then you develop a feeling of all these things that is going to go up. All right? And then we're going to take away a big, big summary. Here we go. I mean, I'm going to like do it like this, all right? So you can really see what I'm looking at. Food at home is 7.4%. Your simple Milo and your cereals <laughs> conflict, 6.8%. Your fish and egg, 12.2%. Your milk, 3.1%. Your fruits and vegetables, 5.6%. Your Coca-Cola, 5%. Other food, 7.4%. Especially my peanuts will go up by 7.4%. Food away from home, 6.4%. Your food service meals and snacks, 7.1%. Limited service meals, 8%. All right? No problem. Continue. Let's do it. Where are we right now? Let's do it. Uh, how do I go down? <laughs> Next, energy. Here we go, 27%. So your dream of owning a car has just gone through the roof because energy-related commodities, 39.9%, fuel, oil, 46.5%, gasoline, 40%, electricity, 10.7%, Singapore, 5.6%, natural gas, 23.9%. Europe right now is in a gas crisis. We go on down. <laughs> Apparel, 5.3%. You can stop buying new clothes at any more. New vehicles, 12.2%. Used cars, 40.5%. What? You look at all this. And you're still thinking about keeping your money in the bank that pays you 0.05% interest per year. How are you going to play this game? The next message is very clear. If you don't start investing, you've got no chance at all. Now, you've got three choices. Number one, please read up the book, Who Moved My Cheese? No different from the frog trying to swim out of the pot of boiling water or the deer trying to cross the runway called deer. The hill, like, you can choose not to do anything. You already know that. The things around you will go all the way up and your cash in bank cannot sustain it. Number two, you say, okay, I want to take a step of faith. I got to do something. But do what? Now, you can choose to do more jobs, become a part-time Uber or Grab driver. You can give more tuitions at night. But this doesn't give you the big sum that you need to cover all these rising costs. They will let you get by. You still survive but it's just getting by. Then you're left with the third choice. Since everything just allowing me to get by, I cannot pursue what I truly want in life, then perhaps you've got to think about investing. And that's the reason why I seem so passionate about this topic for the last 20 years. It's about becoming a self-directed investor or trader. You take charge. You control your destiny. You acquire wisdom. You don't give up because giving up is no longer a choice. With all these numbers presented to you, if you still don't get it, sorry, you're out of the game. Life is going to be miserable. That's the reality. That's the reason why third world countries like El Salvador made Bitcoin a legal tender. That's the reason why those countries that need to remit money back home, they need to use cryptocurrency to bypass the very high exorbitant cost involved of sending money back home. That's the reason why we believe in Bitcoin. I hope you hear our case out. This is already a proven asset class and you don't want 
to miss out. Back to you, Richard. Thank you, Dr. Clement. Thank you, Dr. Clement. Now, so we do our best to research facts and data from the market and present to you. With the facts and data, you can make informed decisions for your financial future. So, Dr. Clement, let's go to the Q&A right now. Uh, I have a question here from Swansi. So, Swansi says that will US interest rate affect cryptocurrency? Yes, and absolutely yes. Let's walk through the three steps for according to Swansi question. Step one, granted, interest rates will go up. And Wall Street have already been thinking about this problem. Interest rates go up, purchasing power goes down. That means for every single dollar that you have in the past versus right now, you're going to buy lesser and lesser goods and services around us because of the high inflation as well. So let me give you the textbook theory first. Why does the government or the Fed chairman, they have an immediate need to raise the interest rates? Because step one, inflation has shot through the roof. Now, why things are becoming more and more expensive? We can trace back to the breakdown starting from March 2020, outbreak of the pandemic. Because of the outbreak of pandemic, many of the supply chain were cut down. And as a result, goods and services cannot move through smoothly through the supply chain. And things become more and more expensive. All right, so inflation is the step one. Now, the only weapon left for the government to control inflation is step two. You got to raise interest rate to make the cost of running business more expensive to bring the inflation down. That's what they hope. But the problem is this. As step two, if they raise the interest rates too fast, the entire economy will collapse. And I have to introduce to you the third word in step three, and that's called recession. We do not want recession at all costs. We try to avoid that. So it's a very fine calibration that they have to balance right now. How fast and how high I raise the interest rates. They were praying really hard January. Let's hope the inflation dropped below 7%. Unfortunately, it went to 7.5%. So confirm, March they have to raise. But by how many basis points? Is it 0.5? Is it 50 basis point, 0.5%? Or 100 basis point, 1%? That's the job of the Fed chairman and his wisdom. So you take these three steps. Let's apply it right now to cryptocurrency. Every hash fund manager right now is thinking, I got so much cash in my treasury and it's losing its value. I got to find an alternative haven to protect my cash, the underlying. And at the same time, if I can protect it, I can enjoy appreciation in value. There's only one instrument in this world that can do that. That is none other than Bitcoin. That's the reason why starting from Wall Street Titan, Paul Tudor Jones, to Bill Miller, to Michael Saylor, to BlackRock, everybody rushed into Bitcoin. And we hit an all-time high 69,000 last year. Now you understand, okay? So moving forward, there'll be more triggers of, triggers of event that will cause the price of Bitcoin to shoot up. The nearest one I've given you just now, I suspect, I believe, I predict <laughs> 19 Feb. I think the Russians have to invade Ukraine. They got no other alternatives because of the way the Americans play them. They have to go in. And once there's an outbreak of war, of course, we don't want to see war outbreak, but we are putting on our investors' cap to look at the problem objectively. War outbreak, Bitcoin will spike up because Bitcoin is known as a safe haven asset. The only one way to run away is to put your money into Bitcoin. So you spike. Second trigger event, we are still waiting for the Bitcoin spot ETF. If US want to dominate the world cryptocurrency, they have to be the godfather of Bitcoin. They have to approve it. So they are run on, running out of excuses. We expect that to take place maybe around March. And the third event is April. You know, I just came back from a lunch meeting today. We were just discussing our plans to go to the Bitcoin conference in Miami. And I think our plans are quite fixed right now 
that 6 to 9 of April, there'll be major announcement during that three days. Let's see how it plays out. So all in in summary, the rise of interest rates is putting forward the case for the price of Bitcoin to appreciate. Back to you, Richard. Thank you, Dr. Kremer. Dr. Kremer, one more question uh, from Shuen Smith. Uh. Shuen Smith talk about, asked a question about diversification, like buying Bitcoin, also Visa, and also Black Rock stock. Right? He says, this sounds like an interesting view. So maybe have you got any comment on this? Yes, absolutely. So while everybody who are playing cryptos are so deep into cryptos, they fail and they got, got blindsided by the most powerful instrument on planet Earth. And I want to introduce this to all of you, a proven 200-year-old product, and that's none other than the stock market. So this is what I did last night. You know, when they announced CPI was 7.5%, and straight off, I captured this company called Asana. It's a work productivity tool. We play it. We make $25,860 pure profit. In percentage terms, 25% profit return in less than one month. Go in, get out, we make money. Please do not forget about the stock market. In fact, the stock market is the foundation of your wealth. This is the place that all of us should start off with. Then you branch out to cryptocurrency. Because why? The stock market will tell us where are the latest trend that's headed? Is it energy stocks? Is it cloud stocks? Is it pharmaceutical stocks? Is it the tech stocks? And we got to know and feel the pulses of the market. And the hot money will go to the place where it will rise. They will tell us where the emerging sectors and the key demographic where the consumers are spending money. You take that understanding and apply to crypto market, you become a wiser investor and not the other way around. You can't take your knowledge in crypto market to apply in the stock market. There's only one unique direction. Stock market goes to crypto, not the other way around. So I want to encourage all of you, if you settle your mind and say, hey, I want to be a well-rounded, all-rounded investor, three instruments for you. Cryptocurrency, options trading, and stock investing. This tree, you master it. We call it Wealth Trilogy. You are on the right track to manage your own money. You become a full-fledged, self-directed investor. Back to you, Richard. Thank you, Dr. Kremer. Dr. Kremer, I know uh, it's not part of our program here to ask you this question, but I'll ask you anyway. Since you brought this up, when is your next program on this Wealth Trilogy? <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, the Wealth Trilogy comprises of three parts. There's a crypto trading class to, for two days. I'm conducting next Thursday and Friday. And from the first batch of intake of students, they love it so much because we are going to teach you about DeFi, decentralized finance, as well as decentralized exchanges called the DEX. We're also going to teach you about non-fungible tokens, NFT. And, you know, the last class majority of the students bought the NFT together with me. And, you know, I want to kind of show you all how exciting it is to get into the world of NFT. And I know Richard is also going to share with all of you about an upcoming project uh, from Richard about NFTs, all right? So give you a heads up on this. I mean, NFT right now is the next big thing. I, I also step out of a meeting on NFTs. This is the one I bought. <laughs> a crazy little Fanta bear. And... How do you go about buying an NFT like this and then lock it up on your MetaMask wallet? So I'm going to open up my MetaMask wallet on my iPhone app. And are you guys aware that you can already see your NFT on your MetaMask wallet on your iPhone app right here? So you can see this is my, my wallet. Oops, is this clear? Uh, maybe like this. <laughs> Trying to get the right zoom. Uh, not that clear. All right, maybe i try another way next time. But you can see your NFT in your own MetaMask wallet, which is the next trend that we're talking about. It's a trend called verification. And so next Thursday and Friday will be our two days Crypto's Masters Trading Class. And then we also have the Stocks and Options Trading Class. I mean, all these days, 
I can show you guys is found at spiking.com. Uh, I just show you the website is uh, spiking.com slash million, M I L L I O N. And you guys can take a look at the days I wait for the page to load up. And here we go. So the days are all shown up here. These are the three dates right here. And you can go and lock it down at these three dates out here. All right. So stocks trading class will be 10 and 11 of March next month. Options trading class will be 7 and 8 of April in the month of April. All right. So uh, quickly go and lock down these dates. And then you are on your track to manage your wealth for the new year 2022. Thanks for the shout out, Richard. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kremer. There you are. Today's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Bitcoin journey to 100,000. And uh, we end our program here, but we wish you a wonderful, wonderful, fruitful weekend. And this Richard, Success Resources, Spiking, and Dr. Clement wish you well, health, and a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much. We believe that investing in our education has the highest leverage and is the greatest equalizer. Regardless of background, everyone can have the same opportunities in education. We believe in doing what is right, not what is easy. We believe in anything that is worth doing, we do it with passion and excellence. We believe that happiness is the key to success. If you love what you're doing, you're already successful and that both success and failure are temporary, worth sharing about and even celebrating. That said, we believe we have had our fair share of both. Yay! We believe that when the market is tough, we can be tougher. We believe the best product should win, not the best science pitch. We believe that winners are winners because they don't quit. We believe that the biggest sin is to make learning boring. We believe in making decisions and owning our results. We believe in innovation to continue to provide value to all around us. We believe that together, everyone achieves more. We believe that real leaders don't create followers, they create more leaders. We believe that we can learn from our competitors. We believe that women work harder, do better, and are more confident. We believe it's okay to be proven wrong. It's okay to change your mind. And it's okay to cry when you're having a really rough day. We believe in giving everyone the benefit of the doubt. We believe in always saying please and thank you. We believe that if dreaming is free, then we should dream big. And then working hard to achieve it. We believe that if we have knowledge, it's our duty to pass it down. We believe that we shouldn't teach something we ourselves don't believe in. We believe it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. We believe in saying sorry and meaning what we say. We believe in being high tech means adding a human touch. We believe that no one has all the answers. Not even us. But we go find out and we learn. We believe that learning never ends and once you stop learning, you start dying. We believe that one person or one great idea can change the world. That's why we believe in helping you grow and succeed. And with your help, we can change lives globally. We believe. We, we believe. believe. We, we believe. believe. Thank you for your belief in us.